We've all been there. You set up the point perfectly and you get a super easy high ball that you're gonna kill. The hard job is done, the point is over. You just need to finish this last shot. There's no worse feeling than missing an easy shot in pickleball. And when I say an easy shot, I'm referring to any shot that you're supposed to make or be aggressive with. The catch to these shots is that if you aren't doing what I'm about to go through, it can be very easy to miss them. So if you wanna prevent yourself from making these mistakes, make sure to understand all the information in this video. Helping me today, I have my sister Kennedy. Looking at the shots we're gonna cover, first, I'm gonna take you through higher shots at the kitchen. So this encompasses smashes, like this, and mid-height rolls, like this. After this, I'm gonna take you through how to increase your consistency on your drives and your drops from the back of the court. The last thing I'm gonna take you through is a super common mistake that so many players make on their volleys. There's a simple fix, so make sure to stay tuned if you wanna see what it is. To go over some quick terminology that I'm gonna use throughout the video, an air is whenever you miss a shot in pickleball. A forced air is when you miss a shot because your opponent does something good. Like let's say your opponent hits a hard smash and you miss because you don't react in time. That's a forced air. And unforced air is where you miss and it's entirely your fault. So in the first example we showed you in the video where I missed the easy smash, that was an unforced air. The focus of today's video is how you can minimize your unforced airs, which is one of the most important parts to becoming a better player. No! And speaking of airs, it would be a huge unforced air if you didn't hit the subscribe button. Every week we post a video that's pretty much a free private lesson, so make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. So the first shot that we're gonna cover in this video is the smash. So to define a smash, a smash is any shot that you hit at the kitchen where your paddle is usually fully extended upward or just a generally really high shot. So the smash is the shot that we hit when we go past our roll volley. So our roll volley is at about this height. Our smashes, we're hitting usually above the height of our head. Another word for the smash is the overhead. So you might hear people use both. Staying consistent on our smashes starts with our technique. So the technique starts with our grip. So looking at the grip that we hold on our smashes, there's actually a few different options. If you're coming from a tennis background, you probably naturally use the continental grip where you have your index knuckle on the slanted notch next to the big notch in the middle, like this. And what that does is it gives you the ability to pronate through the ball when you smash like this, which gives you a little bit more power. But if you don't have a tennis background, you might prefer to use the Eastern grip where your index knuckle is in the center of the paddle. So I've seen good players do both of these. I don't know if one is particularly better than the other. I'd say it's what your preference is and what you can get faster. But I would say most good players use the Continental, but that might only be because they come from a tennis background. So I play around with both of these and see which works better for you. Looking at our motion or the way that you're hitting the ball, what's really important is that you aren't pancaking your smashes where your elbow is out in front of your body and you're hinging it like this to hit the ball. This is sort of the beginner way to hit a smash. Advanced players put their elbow back and they use the rotation of their shoulder for power. So an advanced smash looks something like this. See, I'm rotating my shoulders and I'm bringing my elbow forward to get more power. So that gives you a lot more power than if you were to just only arm it like this. So to show you a few examples, here I'm just gonna be hitting normal smashes like you see advanced players hit in pickleball. One really important thing to think about is to get your elbow back like you're throwing a ball. So you might not be able to get it all the way back every single time pointing directly behind you, but you wanna hit your overhead like you're throwing a ball. So get that elbow back and rotate through and imagine you're throwing a ball like this. This is no, this is yes. And the next part of your swing that you need to be concerned with is your stance. So if you watch this smash, this is gonna be open stance. As you see, I'm facing the court and this match is gonna be closed stance. And whether or not you use one or the other depends on a few different things, mainly the height of the ball. So if the ball is really high and it might be landing behind you, you definitely wanna use closed stance because when you have this stance, it gives you a lot easier ability to back up. So a lot of the time if your opponent lobs you, you might need to take a few steps back and you're gonna to wanna to use closed stance to do that. It's really hard to back up when you're facing the court. When you use open stance is when the ball isn't very high. So a lot of the time, you aren't gonna be hitting the overhead at the very highest point. You might be hitting your smash a little bit out in front when the ball is lower like this. You see this happen a lot at the high level. So on those lower smashes, the open stance makes more sense. 
Now guys though, I'm gonna go through the main mistakes that I see players making on their smashes, and there's a lot of them, so pay close attention. The first is in relation to footwork, and I think footwork in general is the main place that players make mistakes on all sections of the court. But for smashes, it's especially important. So what you need to know is the goal of your footwork on a smash is to get directly under the ball, so you're hitting it with your paddle straight up. Ideally, you don't wanna be hitting a smash where it's out to the sides of your body like this. So you want it to be right above the height of your dominant shoulder. So I'm righty, so I wanna be hitting the ball right above my dominant shoulder. So let's see some examples. So you see on these smashes, Kennedy's getting right under the ball, hitting right above her right shoulder because she's a righty too. And it looks super smooth. What she doesn't want to do is hit the ball out to her sides. You lose a lot of accuracy like this. You also probably aren't hitting it at the highest point you can over the net. So your goal when you're hitting a smash is to hit it as high as you can so that you have a better angle over the net. When you're side arming it, you're probably letting the ball drop a little bit and you aren't getting it at the highest point. The next mistake that players make is they drop their head while hitting the ball like this. So you don't want to look down or towards where you're hitting the ball as you're hitting it. You wanna keep your head up through contact because when you look down, you actually subconsciously drop your pad a little bit. So when you look down, it makes it a lot easier to hit the ball in the net. So I'll show you what a bad example looks like. I look down as I'm hitting the shot. A good example looks like this. So I keep my head up throughout the contact. Obviously after you hit the ball, you look at where it went, but while you're making contact with the ball, you wanna keep your head relatively still. The next mistakes that players make on their smashes is they get too reckless or too casual. So when I say reckless, what I'm referring to is going for shots that are just unnecessarily close to the lines or unnecessarily hard. When you're hitting a smash and trying to end the point, you wanna go for the safer bets. So when I say the safer bets, I'm referring to the open gaps of the courts between the people that you're playing against. So generally, you might have a gap out to the side of the court, down to the middle, or on the other side of the court. And what you wanna do when you have a smash is aim for the depth of your opponent's feet towards one of these gaps. So if Kennedy's starting to move in a little bit and I see a big gap in the middle, I'm gonna go right at the depth of her feet down the middle. And there's not much she can do there because I went towards the gap. And even if I accidentally hit it towards her, because I'm going right at her feet, it makes it a lot harder for her to get the ball back. So when it's at their feet, they have to drop their paddle and go down, which takes more time. and makes it really difficult to get the ball back if you're hitting it really hard. If they're all the way back, you can't go to their feet. What I do is just hit it as deep as you safely can. So give yourself a few feet of margin from the line and hit something like this. So obviously where you target changes depending on where your opponents are standing, but generally it's either gonna be down the middle or out to the sides of the court. What you don't wanna do is go for some ridiculous angle where you know, you're know you like aiming right on the line inside the kitchen, right? So aim for the safe bets and keep a two foot margin from either line. So two feet away from any line on the court. And guys, that really applies to any shot in pickleball, so you never wanna to get too reckless and go too close to the lines. And another way you can get too reckless is by going for too much power. So if I have a really high, easy shot and I go as hard as I possibly can, sure I made that one, but eventually when I'm going that hard, I'm gonna lose my form and miss. So what I like to say is to go for 85% power so that you can still focus on keeping your form and your accuracy when you hit the shot. 85% of power should be plenty. The next way people miss these shots though is by getting too casual. So what I mean by being too casual is they sort of lose their focus and start acting more nonchalant because they have an easy shot. Maybe they just hit a few nice hard shots and they think, oh, I've already won the point. You know, I have an easy ball now. I don't need to prepare with my feet. So what you want to make sure that you do is you don't lose your footwork like this, right? See, I didn't move my feet very well. I didn't get the ball in the right spot. Make sure you're still focused. The point is not over until it's over. So you should have just as much focus on the last shot of the point as you do on the first shot of the point. Always focus on your footwork and get right under the ball. And the last mistake that I see players make on their smashes is they go for a smash when the ball is just too low, right? So you see there, I should have really hit a roll volley. If the ball is below the height of your head when you're gonna make contact with it, you have no business going for a smash. So that might be because it's just too low or maybe because you're having to reach way too far into the kitchen and it's below your head because of that. So just know at that point, you need to switch to a roll volley, which looks like this. And if you like the smash, make sure to smash that like button. It really helps our channel grow. Looking at the technique on a roll volley, I'm not gonna go too much into it, 
But just know it's just like a normal volley, but we're really emphasizing getting top spin on the ball. So it looks like this. You really want to come below the ball and get above it when you're done. So you get that top spin. And the higher that you hit the shot, you'll probably go for less spin. You want to go for more spin when it's lower. And the reason for that is when it's higher, you also want to add more power. So a higher roll volley, you're going to hit harder. It might not be as hard as your smash because it's a little bit harder to generate power with that motion. But if you can draw a line from your paddle to the court, you can still hit the shot pretty hard. On a lower roll volley, you can't go for nearly as much power. So you see there, I have to bend the ball over the net. So if I have to bend the ball over the net, I can't draw a line from my paddle where I'm hitting it to the ground. It needs to curve over like this, right? So on those lower roll volleys, you wanna focus on using more spin because you can't use quite as much power. Probably the biggest mistake that people make on this volley is they go for too much power when they don't have a high enough shot. So if I'm getting a lower roll volley and I think it's gonna be high, but then it's not high at the last second, what's gonna happen is I'm either gonna miss it long or miss it in the net like I just did there. So you need to be a really good judge of determining whether or not you can draw a line with your paddle to the, your target on the other side of the court. If you can't do this, you wanna focus more on spin and less on power. In terms of where to aim, I would say it's exactly the same as our smashes. You wanna to go towards the open gaps of the court at the depth of your opponent's feet. So if I have a nice high roll volley and I see that there's an opening out to the side, I can go for that angle like that, right? But as Kennedy starts to move in, I wanna make more of an emphasis of slowing the ball down and going at the depth of her feet. So a lot of the time on roll volleys, your opponent's gonna be coming in and they might be really far in. If I have a low roll volley here, I can only hit it about this hard. Because if I go harder than that, I might hit it high to Kennedy and give her an easy volley. So in terms of your consistency on roll volleys, you need to be really conscious of how much power you're using based on the height of the ball and the situation that you're in. In some cases, you'll be going for a roll volley, but it's actually better to let the ball bounce. And I'm gonna go over those situations at the end of the video, and I'll teach you exactly how to deal with them. Now though guys, I'm gonna take you through how you can be more consistent from the back of the court. So if you don't know the things I'm about to tell you, it can be very easy to make unforced errors when you're hitting drives or drops. So just like when we're at the front of the court, on both drops and drives, having good footwork is the number one way to prevent easy misses. Specifically on our drops, you wanna do what you can to hit the ball as it's going down. So I don't wanna hit the ball as it's rising. So if I'm hitting the ball as it's rising like that, I'm taking the ball as it's coming off the bounce. Well, you can hit good drops like that, but it's a little bit more challenging. You have less time to see where the ball is after it bounces. So ideally, I'm giving myself space so that I'm hitting the ball when it's on the way down after the bounce. You can still do it on the rise, guys, but it's a lot easier to do it as it's falling like I am here. And the way to make that happen is with good footwork. So I might need to back up a little bit to make sure I'm getting the ball when it's on the way down, which is worth it because it makes my accuracy way better. So you see there, I took a step back. That let me hit the ball as it was falling down. And if you didn't believe me on that tip, I stole it from Ben Johns, so gives it some credibility. And the other thing that you wanna focus on with your footwork is giving yourself the ability to move forward through the ball. So you see if Kennedy starts hitting the ball really hard, it makes it more challenging to be on balance and rock forward as I'm hitting the ball. So when I'm preparing for a drop, I wanna do whatever I can to get behind the ball so that I can rock forward through it. If I'm falling to the sides, my consistency is gonna to be totally off. If I'm falling to the back, I'm not gonna be nearly as accurate. In terms of where to aim, this is super important to increasing your consistency. So, the higher that I hit the ball over the net, obviously, the less ability that I'll have to hit the ball in the net. So, what you wanna do when you're aiming for your drops is go for a good arc. So when I say good arc, I mean, getting a good bit of height on the ball so that it's peaking at around right above the kitchen line on your side. And with that arc, it lets the ball drop over the net. And this is very similar to how you shoot a basketball. So if I was shooting a basketball and I was just throwing the ball straight towards the rim as hard as I could, it's not gonna drop in into the net. So when you're hitting a drop, you wanna make sure you get that good arc because it makes it a lot easier to make the ball land on the inside of the kitchen. And it's totally fine on a drop if the ball is passing over the net about a foot over it or a foot and a half over it. You still have the potential to hit a great drop from this height over the net. And the other thing you wanna focus on with where you're aiming is you don't need to be hitting your drops super shallow in the kitchen. 
what you can actually do is aim more towards the back of the kitchen, probably around right here, maybe at your opponent's feet. All you're trying to make your opponents do is hit up on the ball. So it's totally fine if they're taking it out of the air, as long as they're having to hit up on it. And when you're aiming for the back of the kitchen, that just gives you more space, more margin for air. So what I do is if you're hitting drops, give yourself a little bit of height, good amount of arc, and aim for that back portion of the kitchen. This is just gonna give you a lot more consistency. When it comes to your drives, same idea with the footwork. You wanna always do what you can to move forward through the ball so that you can rock forward through it. You're not gonna be nearly as accurate if you're on your back foot. So use that footwork and set up your positioning so you can get it in the right spot and move forward through the ball. In terms of where to aim, you definitely wanna get your drives pretty low. Obviously don't aim like right on the net tape, but give yourself six inches to a foot. If you're going above here on a drive, it might stay along or you're just gonna be giving your opponents an easy volley. So I'd say six inches to a foot over the net. But the main way that you stay consistent on your drives is by using top spin. So when I hit top spin on my drives, one, I make the ball dip down at my opponent's feet, but I also prevent myself from hitting the ball long because top spin makes the ball drop faster. So I'm not gonna go too in depth on how to hit topspin. Just know that hitting topspin on your drives or your shots that you hit hard from the back of the court gives you a lot more consistency. So if you wanna go deeper on spin, I have a full video on that. And guys, just wanted to announce that we're currently having our Black Friday sale on the Dink Master. It's our lowest price ever. So if you wanted to be able to dink on your own, at home, on your own time, check it out now on our site and grab yours. So earlier in the video, guys, I mentioned that a lot of players make a big mistake on their roll volley where they're reaching way too far into the court. A lot of the time this happens on a drop. So your opponent hits a drop, lands really shallow in the kitchen, and you're reaching over the kitchen line to try to get the ball out of the air and hit a roll volley. And a lot of the time it is better to reach over to the kitchen line and try to hit the ball out of the air because you take time away from your opponents. But occasionally it's not, and I see a lot of players that are just reaching way too far and miss the ball in the net and make that mistake because of that. So if you're really gonna have to reach into the kitchen and the ball is gonna bounce high enough, it's actually more worth it to let the ball bounce, move a step back, and take it off the bounce. Let me show you another one. There, it makes more sense for me to back up and take that shot off the bounce because I can still hit it pretty hard because I'm getting it from a lot higher point. If I was to take that shot out of the air, I'd be hitting it from about here, but off the bounce, I actually can take it from a good bit higher which is worth the time that I lose by not taking the ball out of the air. In terms of where you aim on the shot, same exact strategy as your roll volley, although you might need to take off a little bit of power because you might not have quite as good of an angle since you're a little farther back, but you can still get a good amount of power and spin on that shot. So the solution to the problem of missing the ball in the net because you're overreaching is letting that ball bounce, pivoting back, so taking that pivot step back, and using that roll technique. You might need to make contact with the ball a little bit further behind you there too. And in this video, guys, I talked a lot about topspin. So if you wanna watch a video all about spin, watch this.